<laughs> Welcome back. Thank you. Please join me in welcoming Stacy Lewis to the interview area. <laughs> Stacy's a Houston native, and she is competing um, here in her hometown. She has 13 LPGA victories, including two major championship titles. Mm -hmm. Stacy, what does it mean to have the Women's Open here in Houston? Um, it's a really big deal. You know, I wish I wish we could have people out here and have kids out here. Um, you know, I just think of growing up in this area and being that little kid that needs to that needs to see us play that needs to have those goals and those aspirations and um, you know we just don't get to play in Texas a lot so it's a really big deal that we're here and especially at champions of all places yeah give us some insight insight into these courses you obviously know them well yeah you know I've played them um, you know played USGA qualifiers here a lot as a kid grew up 45 minutes away so um, you know a lot of it is angles to hole locations because um, obviously the greens are very big so they're going to play very different um, from a front to a back pin um, just knowing where you can and can't miss it the two golf courses are very different grasses are similar so you don't have to change a whole lot there but um, it's just a strategy you know I'm comfortable on the golf course I don't my caddy and I were joking that this is the just the most laid back, easy U.S. Open practice I think I've, a couple of days I think I've ever had just because I've just been able to, to work on my game and work on my swing and not worry about the golf courses so much. Beth Ann? So feeling so laid back when the mm -hmm. gun actually goes off, how do you mm -hmm. keep from pressing too much? Or Because I know this is an mm -hmm. important one. Yeah, you just, I think this golf course does it to, does it for you because you can't force anything here. You, mm -hmm. you know, you get kind of greedy and go after a pin you shouldn't, you're going to pay the price. And so you just kind of have to plot your way around here and, and play boring golf. Um, you know, and I, I do think not having fans is going to help me a little bit, you know, because mm -hmm. definitely when you have more crowds and more people following you, it creates more pressure there. So, mm -hmm. um, so from that aspect, the no fans is a good thing. Right here behind me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hi, Stacy. Yeah. Um, you know, Houston's a large city, doesn't have a LPGA mm -hmm. event here. What would it mean mm -hmm. for the LPGA, Houston itself, mm -hmm. to have a regular stop every year? And also, mm -hmm. what would it mean to promote for girls' golf, for junior golfers, mm -hmm. as well as just a recreational female golfer? Right. Oh, I mean, you, Houston's one of the biggest cities in the world, and there's so many companies that are headquartered here. And, you know, I kind of throw it out to them to say, hey, let's let's get us here more often. You know, let's um, let's have a tournament here every year because there's plenty of good golf courses that are able to do that. And, um, you know, in general, we don't play a lot in Texas. I mean, the Dallas event has only been here recently. So, um, like I said before, just having – the kids to be able to come and have role models and have aspirations to want to be in this tournament one day, you know, that's what, the, that's what we're missing this week. Um, so, you know, from that aspect, I think it's kind of sad for the kids in the area, but, um, but, you know, hopefully this will maybe spark an interest and get us coming back. So, you know, if, if, if everything goes well this week, you think it would help Houston's chances to get us eventually an annual stop every year? Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I think the way things are going right now, you know, who knows um, <laughs> with what companies want to do. But, you know, you've got you know, all these energy companies in this area. And, um, you know, I just make a pitch to anybody that wants us supporting women in their organization and in their company to um, to want to come out and to see this and to see the best in the world. And, um, you know, maybe they can do something to help within the tournament to help their business so it's a win-win for both so um you know we just it usually just takes one person um believing in us and having the idea karen oh. sorry we're gonna go to karen mm -hmm. hi stacy the jackrabbit layout mm -hmm. is so much tighter than mm -hmm. the other one and i was wondering if it requires almost it mm -hmm. rewards different skill sets and mm -hmm. does that increase the challenge of anyone mm -hmm. that unlike you is not really familiar mm -hmm. and has had to kind of decide which course do I want right. to try to figure out mm -hmm. more I mean from playing I, I feel like Jackrabbit usually plays a little harder even though it's shorter um, just because because the greens are elevated um, and there's places you just you can't miss it on that golf course um, and that's what having the knowledge here is going to is hopefully should help me I mean you can't always <laughs> control where the golf ball goes but um, just knowing the little things about it and I would say skill set wise it's going to be similar because um, you're going to 
even on Cypress, you have to be able to control your longer irons, control how much it's releasing out. So I, I'd say it's similar there. It's, it's, it's going to be somebody that hits it high and that can control it, I think. So someone told me, to your point, that Jackrabbit is not a course because of its nuances that you mm -hmm. can walk once and mm -hmm. figure out. So mm -hmm. at the end of the day, could that be where, weirdly, where the tournament is won or lost? I, potentially, for sure. I think, you know, in everybody's head, you say, we're going to play Cypress three times. Exactly. My focus is going to go that way more than the other one. And then, you know, you have a bad day on Jackrabbit and you're not even playing the next two. So um, so I do, I do think that, you know, I know people have asked me and I've just told them, pay attention to Jackrabbit, you know, figure out where you can and can't hit it because that that's the biggest thing over there. Mm -hmm. Stacey, I know there's a lot of uh, golfers, you know, male and female, look up to you. Mm -hmm. When you were growing up, was there someone that you, you know, was your role model? Um, to be honest, I didn't watch that much golf growing up. It wasn't really until I got in college that I really started watching golf at all. And then once I did, you know, I, I really got to know the history of the game and I wanted to, you know, to learn from other people. That's something that I did day one from when I got on tour. And I still do. I still I watch how other people practice. I watch what other people do because um, somebody always does something better than you, you know, whether it's a little chip shot or how they do lag putting or whatever it is. Um, you know, so when I came on tour, I tried to play a lot with Kari Webb. Um, I was in Meg Mallon and Beth Daniels ears a lot, Betsy King and um, Nancy Lopez, you know, they've all been so helpful f to me on, and a lot of it's not specifically how to hit a putt, but it's how to handle everything that we do and the emotions of it. And, um, you know, so it, it, for me, it was more once I got on tour and, and got to this level. So, so, yeah. So if there was, if there was a stop in Houston with <laughs> all these, all these girls and everything, if there was a stop now, mm -hmm. they could sit there and look up and get more involved. Absolutely, in it. and that and maybe that's part of it. Is I never had an yeah. opportunity to go to a tournament. Um, we did go to the Jamie Farr when I was a kid. Uh, my parents are from Toledo, so we always went to that tournament. But um, but that wasn't that was really when I was pretty little. It wasn't when I was really interested in golf. Yeah. <laughs> Last question. That okay. was my well, question. Thank you. Okay. All right, I have one. Oh, go. <laughs> um, so Lexi has a new caddy this week. You've had the same caddy for basically your entire career. 12 years. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and this is such a unique tournament, mm -hmm. two golf courses. How difficult is it to adjust to a new caddy while trying to learn two golf courses all at the same time? Well, I've never had to adjust to a new caddy. Mm. <laughs> so, um, I mean, the hardest thing, I guess, would be that trust factor of knowing that he knows what he's talking about kind of thing and trusting and you know, just seeing certain, you know, Travis knows what shape of shot I see. He knows the type of shots that I see mm -hmm. and where, you know, you're, if you had a different caddy, they wouldn't know that as much. Um, so, you, you know, maybe with a new caddy, you're doing more yourself, um, which on these golf courses, if you have two, you kind of, you need some help. You need somebody to kind of rely on because you can't in two days three days you can't go map two golf courses and know exactly what to do on every whole location yourself yeah all right thanks stacy good luck this week thank you thanks stacy <laughs>